Welcome, everyone, friends, neighbors, and those of you deeply invested in understanding the global economic ties that bind us. Welcome back to another hot topic breakdown with your favorite host here on Boss Economics World. Today, we're diving into the latest economic melodrama unfolding between the European Union and China in what could soon escalate into a global trade conflict. Yes, you heard it. A possible trade war, and it's all about electric vehicles. EVs for short, at stake, billions in exports, tens of thousands of jobs, and no less than the future of key industries in both Europe and China, as they fight to dominate the fast-growing electric vehicle market. Strap in, folks, because today we've got tariffs flying left, right, and center, but there's a seismic shift happening behind the scenes that we cannot afford to overlook. First things first, on Friday's vote, the European Union gave the nod to implement up to 45% tariffs on electric vehicles, EVs, from China, yes, 45%, a number that's almost certain to rattle bones in boardrooms across Beijing and Shanghai. These tariffs will last for five years and aim to protect European automakers from what can only be described as an influx of competitively priced Chinese EVs, which have rapidly captured a significant portion of the European market. At first glance, this might seem like a natural measure for a union that's scrambling to save its industrial base. Share prices of European automakers sharply rose post-vote, Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW among them, likely because investors finally saw something being done to defend European interests. But this move is actually a signal that Europe may be preparing to escalate a protracted and potentially dangerous trading war. Let me tell you, this will not be painless. What's cranking the conflict up a notch is China's angry retort. Beijing has vowed retaliation, strongly hinting at its own tariffs on European exports. We're talking dairy, pork, brandy, and even European automobiles themselves. Catch that? This escalating spat isn't limited to EVs. It's potentially going to hit a wide-ranging list of industries. All right, stop for a sec. Let's peel back the layers here. On the surface, this looks like a direct battle of tariffs. But what's the more profound issue underpinning this EU-China showdown? This is about much, much more than car sales. It's about economic supremacy, industrial sovereignty, and geopolitical leverage. Europe, long a manufacturing and innovation hub, has been squeezed hard, especially in the automobile sector, a critical artery of its entire economy. Leading carmakers like Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Stellantis NV, once global trendsetters, are now facing tough competition. Once dominating their domestic and regional market, they are now alarmed by Chinese-made electric cars, which have been accelerating in market penetration. The market share of all electric cars sold in Europe that are made in China zoomed from a measly 3% to over 20% in the past three years. Chinese electric vehicle makers have gotten here through a variety of means, in no small part thanks to generous state subsidies from Beijing. This is where the EU felt compelled to respond and put the foot down. Europe alleges, emphasizing through their actions, that these government subsidies have created an unlevel playing field, tipping competition in China's favor, and essentially undercutting European competitors in their own backyard. But remember, globalization cuts both ways. That same clash of financial policies risks pushing Europe into an economic paradox. Defending its market against China could end up backfiring if we see a full-blown trade war erupt. Now, folks, you might be wondering how Europe ended up so vulnerable, so dependent on regions outside its influence for its own critical industries. Well, buckle up, because we're about to talk about supply chains. Yes, the intricacies of how globalization has ensnared Europe and kept it under the thumb of crumbling trade dependencies. Europe and China are economic frenemies, doing 739 billion euros in total trade last year alone. But as global power dynamics and economic strategies shift, Europe is starting to rethink that relationship. Former European Central Bank President Mario Draghi even warned recently that China's state-sponsored competition leaves Europe vulnerable to economic coercion. Quite frankly, Europe is a chunk of global commerce where Chinese producers want to be, and right now, Chinese EV makers are taking full advantage of that space. Their success is fed by years of solidifying their supply chain dominance, keeping prices low while offering high-tech products. And why hasn't Europe kept up with China on the EV front? Regulatory hurdles, higher labor costs, and slower adaptation to new technologies. While European manufacturers remain tangled in supply chain sunshine and feathers, China has fine-tuned every part of the EV manufacturing ecosphere, from mining rare earth metals to battery production and streamlined assembly lines, 
ready to pump out EVs on scales unimaginable in Europe. Here's the kicker. The EU's tariff-based approach won't fix Europe's EV problem. Rather than adapting through innovation and scaling their competitive advantage, European carmakers are leaning on protective measures. Tariffs as a crutch. Don't get me wrong, guys. 45% tariffs might decelerate the flood of cheap EVs from China. But in the long term, these actions won't fix the structural inadequacies in the European automotive industry. Without scale, technology, and adequate supply chains for essential components like EV batteries, easily one of the most capital-intensive pieces of an electric car, Europe will remain vulnerable. That's why everyone's talking about Germany voting against these tariffs. They realize that this Band-Aid solution might come with catastrophic repercussions for their own dependence on Beijing and their manufacturing giants. Look at the abstaining countries in the EU vote. Twelve nations opted to sit this one out including crucial abstentions from economies uncertain about provoking Beijing further. The EU is clearly split, and that indecisiveness hints at just how precarious their economic footing really is. Meanwhile, the Chinese EV specialists have a tough decision to make. Will they absorb the cost of these looming tariffs or pass the burden onto European consumers by raising EV prices? It's a delicate balance. While European demand for EVs is still growing, any price increase driven by tariffs could dampen that excitement and leave Chinese players without the sales boost they've been enjoying. And don't forget, back home in China, market competition for Chinese EV producers is intensifying. The Chinese domestic market itself is slowing down. Homegrown competitors are jostling for slices of the same pie, meaning margins are likely getting smaller by the day. The prospect of moving factories to Europe, allowing Chinese automakers to sidestep the entire situation, is already on the table. Brands like BYD, Geely, owner of Volvo and Lotus, SAIC Motor, and NIO are already eyeing potential avenues, setting up their production lines inside Europe to stay competitive. Ironically, this could build further industrial dependency between the EU and China, unless Europe takes more aggressive steps to level the playing field through domestic innovation, raw material independence, and bolstering key industries. But let's get to the million-dollar question. Who stands to benefit the most from this EU-China standoff, or crucially, who could lose the most? European automakers may get short-term protection from this tariff decision, but we can't forget that tariff wars come with unintended consequences. Let's look at recent precedent, the US-China trade war. Initially, Washington imposed tariffs to protect industries, but American consumers ended up shouldering higher prices across multiple industries. And the same could happen here in Europe as well. Higher prices on EVs, be they European or Chinese, could deter future purchases, hampering EU's ambitious climate goals for decarbonization by 2050. And don't forget about Chinese retaliation. If Beijing responds aggressively with retaliatory tariffs on European goods, well, this tit-for-tat could snowball into a full-blown economic war. Think lost jobs, plummeting manufacturing output, cutting off markets that Europe desperately needs as demand in other advanced economies wanes. Likewise, multinational companies like Tesla, which operates in both the EU and China, may also have to rethink their strategies. The disruptions could send ripples through the global marketplace, amplifying uncertainty, and let's face it, uncertainty scares money. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I both know that numbers don't lie, so let's take a quick glance at the data. The EU automotive industry represents roughly 7% of the EU's GDP and supports over 14 million jobs throughout the continent. This makes clear that the implications of EU's decisions on the automotive sector go far beyond individual manufacturers. They affect millions of workers, hundreds of supply chain businesses, and indeed, the overall strength of the EU's economy. A misstep in macroeconomic policymaking, especially in a sector as critical as automobiles, could have ripple effects that span from Berlin to Brussels, Milan to Madrid. Now, let's dive deeper into the immediate data surrounding China's profound impact on the European EV market. One dot Chinese EV penetration in Europe. From 2020 to 2023, the share of electric cars sold in Europe and manufactured in China skyrocketed from 3% to over 20%. Even more astonishing, Chinese domestic brands like BYD, NIO, and Xpeng represent 8% of that market. The rest comes from international companies like Tesla, who produce their vehicles in Chinese factories and export them to Europe. What does this mean? In pure numbers, between 2022 and 2023, Chinese EV exports to Europe surged, 
with Chinese brands having sold approximately 150,000 EVs in total to European consumers in 2022 alone. Chinese automakers are growing their foothold alarmingly fast, with Europe positioned as a premium destination for their products. European EV market growth, despite strained manufacturing output, Europe remains an attractive market for EVs. Sales of electric vehicles in the European Union expanded by 28% in the first half of 2023, with EVs accounting for nearly 24% of all new vehicle registrations. However, this burgeoning demand is creating a paradox. While Europe wants citizens to transition to electric cars for its Green Deal goals, it's becoming more reliant on Chinese imports, precisely the very competitive threat that European automakers fear. 3. Tariff Impact on Prices Industry analysts estimate that the proposed 45% tariffs on Chinese EVs could raise prices by up to €15,000 per vehicle for European consumers. Even though Daiwa Securities analyst Kevin Lau described the EU market as a relatively small portion of Chinese automakers' total sales, accounting for approximately 1% to 3% of total sales for giants like BYD and SAIC Motor, such a price hike would place significant constraints on consumer demand already sensitive to inflationary pressures in energy and housing. For dot employment in the automotive sector, the automotive industry supports over 14 million European jobs, both directly and indirectly. This includes approximately 2.6 million manufacturing jobs in countries like Germany, France, and Italy, which rely heavily on external demand, including from China. Germany, being one of the biggest exporters of vehicles, especially luxury brands like BMW, Mercedes, and Volkswagen, could face severe setbacks if China retaliates with tariffs on European brand automobiles. Which brings us to the next point. Let's pause to highlight a critical aspect of this puzzle. Germany's pivotal role in European politics and economics. Germany voted against the tariffs, not out of disagreement with the need to protect its industry, but based on a deep-seated fear of escalating to an unavoidable trade war with China. Given that one-third of German automakers' sales last year came from China, this is no small hurdle. Mercedes-Benz and BMW, in particular, rely on the Chinese consumer market to sustain their global profitability and any disruption, be it through retaliatory tariffs or reduced Chinese demand, puts thousands of highly paid German jobs in jeopardy. Consider this, Volkswagen alone sold over 2.4 million cars in China in 2022, making China its largest market globally. Roughly equivalent stakes are held by Mercedes and BMW which exported about one-third of their high-margin models to Chinese consumers in the same period. If China retaliates with equivalent import duties on European automobiles, particularly luxury cars, which are dominant in China, the impact on German auto exports could be massive. Some estimations suggest that retaliatory tariffs would slice off anywhere from 10 to 15 billion euros from German automakers' annual revenues. This is why Robert Habeck, Germany's economy minister, opposed the tariff proposal warning of the dangers associated with triggering a full-blown trade war. He knows that while domestic protection appeals politically in the short term, it could backfire by compounding strain on Germany's most vital exports to China. Moreover, let's not mince words. Berlin, as the largest economy in the EU, sets the directive for much of the bloc's policy directions. German political reluctance to antagonize China on trade would likely dilute the EU's willingness to escalate hostilities despite pressure from countries like France that are urging Brussels to defend Europe more aggressively. The large number of abstentions in the EU vote highlights this tension. Many European nations are deeply conflicted about taking such drastic measures against China, recognizing that their economies cannot weather the full brunt of a trade war. So what can we expect next from Beijing? History offers us many clues here, friends. In previous trade disputes, China has expertly applied proportional retaliations using its enormous economic leverage. For example, in a similar spat with the U.S. under the Trump administration, China didn't hold back. Tariffs were imposed on tens of billions of dollars worth of U.S. goods, ranging from soybeans to automobiles, and we know how that trade war turned out. If the EU goes ahead, China will likely hit back with tariffs on key European exports, namely dairy, pork, brandy, and automobiles. In 2022, EU dairy exports to China totaled over 1 billion euros, while European brandy from France is prized in Chinese markets. Likewise, automobile exports from Europe to China amount to several billion euros annually, making them a prime target for retaliation. In another potential revenge strategy, 
China could cut off European investments in its domestic markets, as Chinese bureaucrats hinted post-EU vote that their actions could also include reducing European foreign direct investment, FDI, access. More significantly, long-term retaliation might come in the form of China further reducing its demand for European luxury goods, including the iconic brands under companies like LVMH, think Louis Vuitton, Moat, Hennessy, which draw large segments of revenue from Chinese buyers. China knows how to apply pressure in non-tariff forms. We could see regulatory barriers or artificial bottlenecks imposed on European luxury brands operating within China, jeopardizing markets worth tens of billions of euros annually. Friends, our story doesn't end inside just the EU or China. The entire world is watching this closely. We're seeing a global power struggle happening here, and the EV trade tariffs are just part of a bigger picture. A post-COVID global economy shifting away from unbridled globalization to a world run by tariffs, sanctions, and supply chain nationalism. Let's not forget that the U.S. is watching this closely, too. Washington has already clamped down hard on Chinese competition with moves like the Inflation Reduction Act, which grants substantial tax breaks to domestic EV manufacturers while squeezing out Chinese components like batteries through protectionist policies. The Biden administration might just find itself an unintentional beneficiary of the European-Chinese trade tensions. Tesla, a significant player in both the EU and China, could now reevaluate its strategy, possibly shifting operations to favor the U.S. market given the potential for European disruptions. Meanwhile, Japan and South Korea, also major producers of EVs and critical components, especially semiconductors, may also subtly realign their trade policies to hoover up any market share forfeited by Chinese manufacturers if tariffs significantly impair their exports to Europe. And don't forget, many emerging markets, think Brazil, India, South Africa, are sensing an opportunity here too. As the trade war intensifies between these two giants, they could position themselves as alternative auto or component suppliers for Europe or China, especially in areas like metals, batteries, and rare earths. Let's turn our eyes back to Europe now. Is the EU truly ready to weather this economic showdown? Is erecting these tariff walls the right hedge against Chinese competition? Or are policymakers merely sticking their fingers in the dam while structural deficits pile up behind them? In theory, EU leaders are right to focus on protectionism to defend industries critical to Europe's economic survival and long-term sovereignty. But they also need to be careful not to rashly overplay their hand. A sustained trade war especially one involving sensitive industries like automobiles, could generate far-reaching, counterproductive impacts. The cost drivers associated with trade conflicts would raise consumer prices, slow growth, and undermine the EU's own efforts to transition to a green economy. If electric vehicle access becomes prohibitively expensive for European consumers, then how can the EU hope to meet its climate targets, such as carbon neutrality by 2050? Ultimately, this is no small storm on the horizon. The EU's decision to impose tariffs on Chinese EVs is just one ripple in what could become a geopolitical tidal wave. For Europe, it's a high-stakes balancing act. Protect its industries or risk the wrath of China's economic firepower. But let's not fool ourselves. This is more like walking a tightrope over an active volcano. The EU, for all its internal divisions and economic muscle, is dealing with one of the most formidable economic powers in the world and the consequences of a sustained showdown with China could harm Europe's own economic goals in the long term. Today, we're going to explore how Europe can prepare for what comes next, the repercussions of a messy trade war, and the steps it can take to navigate this looming crisis. So, we return to the critical question, can the EU afford to decouple from China? And if it can, how fast can it realistically reduce its dependencies without causing unnecessary self-harm? The EU's growing concern over its dependency on China is palpable, especially as this isn't just about EVs. China is Europe's largest trading partner, and the degree of interconnection is staggering. Everything from rare earth metals to solar panels and battery technology flows from China to Europe. Add to that the huge volume of Chinese investments in European infrastructure, and it becomes painfully clear that these two economies are woven into a complex tapestry. The sharp rise in China's market share in the European EV industry is a reflection of this deeper trend. Over 30% of Europe's total imports of renewable energy products, electric vehicle batteries, and high-tech components come from China. In 2020, Europe imported over 79 billion euro worth of tech-related goods from China. In response to concerns about becoming too reliant on Chinese technology and manufacturing dominance, 
the European Commission began promoting strategic autonomy, a concept that implies Europe should reduce dependencies in these key sectors without sacrificing growth. But is that easier said than done? Quite frankly, Europe can't instantly wean itself off Chinese imports, whether it's for cars, phones, rare earths, or solar technologies. Doing so would be economically catastrophic, at least in the short term. The region would face massive supply chain shortages, price hikes, and potentially have to postpone its ambitious climate goals if the Green Deal is stymied by the sudden absence of affordable Chinese EVs or the essential components that only China currently produces at scale. However, Europe must begin the process of diversification if it is to avoid getting cornered. The EU's Green Deal and its goal to be climate neutral by 2050 must be upheld without reinforcing unsustainable procurement practices from economies like China that undermine Europe's supply chain self-reliance. If Europe intends to preserve its auto industry, protect consumer interests, and mitigate its dependency on Chinese EVs, action must be taken immediately to diversify supply chains and ramp up domestic production. Here's a breakdown of exactly what Europe could do. One dot invest in local battery production. The reality is that Europe is far too dependent on China for lithium batteries, the single most important component of an electric vehicle. Europe does possess some lithium resources in Spain, Portugal, and potentially Greece, but these remain underdeveloped. If the EU wants to build a solid domestic position in the EV sector, it must activate these resources and invest in Europe-based manufacturing for batteries. A recent projection estimated that Europe would account for 20% to 30% of global battery production by 2030, a huge step up from its current less than 10% share. While increasing battery production is crucial, this will take time, raising the question of whether Europe has the luxury of waiting. To kickstart this production, Brussels, for example, could set up public-private partnerships that pour money into building a Europe-centric battery supply chain to reduce dependence on Chinese battery giants like CATL, Contemporary Amperex Technology Company. 2. Increase funding for R&D and innovation in EV technology. European automakers must advance in their R&D capabilities if they hope to compete with China's tech-savvy, low-cost EVs. Investment in cutting-edge technologies, such as solid-state batteries, autonomous driving systems, and ultra-fast charging, UFC, technologies, can help European automakers regain their competitive footing. Europe's technology ecosystem isn't weak, but it's lagging in certain critical areas, and that's having a direct impact on how quickly and effectively European car manufacturers bring market-disrupting products to consumers. Where will the extra money come from? Analysts often argue that redistributing the EU's next-gen EU funding, a post-pandemic stimulus package aimed at boosting green and digital transitions, to support both innovation in clean transportation technologies and their associated industries, like metals and battery materials, could aid in removing competitive discrepancies with China. 3. Fortify trade agreements with other global economic powers. With China threatening retaliation and a potential reduction in FDI, Europe must plan for the possibility of losing market access to one of its most significant trading partners. Enter the United States, Japan, and India as critical alliances. European leaders could push forward expanded trade deals with these regions to foster investments and create alternative markets for European goods should a full trade spat with China further wreck market confidence in both directions. Europe doesn't have to look too far away. India, for instance, is ramping up its manufacturing capacities in EVs and could serve as an alternative market for European cars, not to mention a sourcing hub for components like batteries or software systems. Moreover, Japan and South Korea remain formidable players in the global EV market. Inking partnerships with their companies could help push European automakers up a rung in terms of global competitiveness. For dot secure rare metals and diversify supply chains. Europe already started this process with the European Raw Materials Alliance, ERMA, focusing on securing the supply of minerals critical to the development of EVs, including cobalt, nickel, and rare earths, necessary to avoid sourcing from China. The EU's investment in mining operations in Africa and Bolivia could ramp up further, but to make that work, Europe needs to streamline its legal and environmental regulations to fast-track mining permits and refining capacity development for essential resources. Give this process too many red lights, and China will continue to dominate supply chains. 5. Encouraging reshoring or nearshoring of EV production. As Chinese automakers explore building manufacturing plants in Europe to avoid trade sanctions, European authorities could pull an economic judo move by incentivizing these very investments. 
We've heard of BYD eyeing France, MG Motors, SAIC, setting up shop in the UK, and Geely prepping for more EU investments via Volvo. Rather than resisting these companies outright, Europe could impose conditional incentives for Chinese EV makers looking to set up local operations. Doing so could create jobs, foster industrial alliances, and actually reduce escalation risks, all while keeping European consumers' access to affordable EVs alive. These measures won't shield the EU from all the risks associated with a prolonged standoff with Beijing, but they could significantly minimize economic fallout and pave a path for long-term economic resilience. Let's be clear, though. Even with preparations, a full-scale trade war with China could be devastating for Europe. The WDO's role in mediating such disputes has been largely diminished in recent years, rendering this global rulebook framework almost inert. A unilateral clash will affect industries well beyond automobiles. Let's count some additional potential costs. Job losses could top 250,000 in the automotive sector alone, especially if China sharply cuts purchases of German and French cars. Factories reliant on Chinese demand for luxury cars like BMW, Audi, and Mercedes could close down, and thousands of direct and ancillary jobs along the chain could be disrupted as firms scramble to re-diversify. Uneven inflation. Car prices in Europe, already soaring due to semiconductor shortages and supply chain disruptions since the pandemic, could reach untenable levels for most consumers. The average price of an electric vehicle in Europe could increase by 10,000 euros or more, making them unaffordable for middle-class consumers. Supply chain disruptions. Beyond EVs, China is the world's largest supplier of goods involving rare earths, crucial components used in everything from wind turbines to iPhones to military guidance systems. Losing access to China's output could delay green tech projects across the continent, including EU solar and wind energy expansion. Dilution of EU Green Deal. One of the most chilling longer-term effects of a trade war would be the crippling of EU's climate goals. Electric vehicles are essential to meeting emissions reduction targets under the Paris Climate Agreement. Yet if their affordability evaporates, this will cripple the EU's broader environmental aspirations. It's clear that the EU currently sits at an economic and strategic crossroads. While the decision to impose tariffs on Chinese EVs might seem like a protective shield for European automakers, the consequences of triggering an all-out trade war could be catastrophic for the continent's fragile economic recovery and its lofty climate ambitions. In the short run, these tariffs will likely support European car makers, but only temporarily. The deeper issues haven't been solved. Europe faces an incredible uphill battle when it comes to closing the competitive gap in technology, production capacity, and market integration relative to China in the electric vehicle, EV, sector. If these structural deficits are not addressed quickly, the tariffs may do little more than delay the inevitable. Europe falling behind in the rapidly evolving global EV landscape. So where does that leave Europe? On the one hand, there's the immediate protection of its domestic industries through tariffs on Chinese EVs, which may appease some manufacturers and temporarily boost share prices. On the other hand, there is the broader threat of escalating tensions into a full-scale trade war that could cripple Europe's economy, slow its green transition, and erode key revenue sources for industries that are deeply dependent on China, such as the luxury car and consumer goods sectors. Let's explore how the EU can navigate this very tight and winding road without falling into either of these traps. The situation the EU finds itself in is reminiscent of a classic economic dilemma. Do you shield struggling industries from foreign competition, or do you push for increased innovation and competitiveness? Here are the core issues Europe is wrestling with. One dot dependency on foreign supply chains. European automakers rely heavily on Chinese batteries, semiconductors, and rare earth materials the lifeblood of EV technologies. Putting tariffs on finished EVs is one thing, but Europe still doesn't have the infrastructure to outcompete China in the mass production of these critical components. Until Europe can both ramp up domestic production capacity and invest in long-term research and development, R&D, it will continue to depend on Chinese imports, tariffs or not. Two dot protecting domestic jobs versus pursuing long-term resilience. About 14 million jobs are tied to the EU's automotive sector, and politicians are wary of disrupting these livelihoods. The short-term gain of tariffs could provide a shield for workers in Germany, France, and Italy. But unless Europe modernizes its auto sector, integrating AI, advanced manufacturing techniques, and innovating battery technology, the job losses will come eventually, 
as seen already with factory shutters in Volkswagen's Germany-based plants. 3. Dot compromise on consumer costs and the climate agenda. The most immediate casualty of this tariff policy will likely be consumer access to affordable EVs. Let's look at numbers. As previously mentioned, Europe's electric vehicle initiative and its goals for electrifying the car fleet depend on consumer adoption, which in turn relies on keeping costs low. Imports from China have been a crucial part of achieving this affordability, with some Chinese vehicles offering features comparable to European brands but at 20 to 40 percent lower costs. Tariffs that raise EV prices by 10,000 euros or more will hit European buyers hard, leading to reduced demand and potentially delaying decarbonization goals. So, how did Europe get to this point where it's forced to retrench in a defensive posture through tariffs? To fully understand, we need to look at how Europe lost its lead in the global EV race. Not too long ago, European automakers Volkswagen, BMW, Daimler, and Renault were hailed as pioneers in green automotive innovations. Yet, despite early leadership, complacency, and bureaucratic inefficiencies, slowed the region's response to changes in consumer preferences and technological developments. China, on the other hand, with its relentless focus on becoming the world's EV hub, poured billions into developing supply chains, research, and critical infrastructure domestically. As part of its Made in China 2025 initiative, the country sponsored firms like BYD, NIO, and Geely to develop state-of-the-art EV technologies. More than that, China's government had the foresight to lock up global supplies of rare earths and lithium resources through mining deals and partnerships across Africa, South America, and Australia. Today, China produces over 80% of the world's EV batteries and controls three-quarters of the global EV supply chain. The Chinese strategy wasn't just about pumping out vehicles but controlling the entire life cycle, from raw material extraction to production, to in-market services, such as battery replacements and smart charging infrastructure. European companies, despite their engineering expertise, simply can't compete with the cost advantages Chinese manufacturers enjoy from controlling each phase of this pipeline. The United States, Europe's transatlantic ally, also has a major stake in this issue. With the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, IRA, the U.S. has pivoted its own focus toward localizing its EV supply chain, creating tax advantages for American EV makers and cutting out companies that rely heavily on Chinese parts and technology. This move further isolates Europe, as it finds itself stuck between two global powers locking horns over control of high-tech industries. While U.S. manufacturers like Tesla benefited enormously from producing in and exporting from China to other global markets, new U.S. legislations are pushing firms to reshore production, or at the very least diversify it away from China. Europe, without equivalent policy tools and a much smaller consumer market than the U.S., isn't able to exert the same kind of competitive pressure. If Europe continues to lag behind both the U.S. and China, it faces the danger of losing not only the EV race but broader leadership in other strategic technologies like semiconductors, AI, and battery storage systems. Europe risks becoming technologically dependent on foreign players for its critical infrastructure, especially as green energy transitions become an essential part of governance and economic planning globally. As hinted before, the geopolitical ramifications of this EU-China trade standoff could go far beyond just cars. China is unlikely to stand by and watch Europe attempt to curb its exports. Here are several retaliatory measures China can, and likely will, impose. One dot targeted sanctions on European luxury industries. China is a massive market for European luxury goods. Brands like LVMH, Dior, and Hermes generate a considerable proportion of their revenues from Chinese consumers. Beijing could restrict market access for these brands or swamp them with red tape, effectively blocking their ability to export and advertise their products. This is no small threat. In 2022, France alone exported luxury goods worth over 20 billion euros to China, and with advanced middle-class consumption in cities like Shanghai, Beijing, and Guangzhou, a cutoff could cripple key industries in Europe's economy. 2. Tightening the noose on European automakers. While European automakers struggle to compete in their own markets, they heavily rely on China for global sales, especially luxury cars. For example, BMW, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz sell more than 30% of their vehicles in the Chinese market. China could impose tariffs or quotas on European auto imports as a retaliatory measure, crippling Germany's export-dependent economy. And let's not ignore Beijing's ability to delay or shut down joint ventures with European firms, undercutting their ability to stay competitive. 
Three dot weaponization of supply chains. China has a vice grip on rare earth materials, as well as much of the lithium and cobalt markets, key ingredients for wind turbines, EVs, and batteries. Should Beijing decide to limit export quotas of these critical materials, Europe would face severe production constraints across multiple green industries. For dot imposing barriers on European FDI, China has long benefited from significant levels of foreign direct investment, FDI, flowing in from Europe. The potential for China to significantly restrict European firms' ability to invest in the country could particularly harm sectors like automotive, manufacturing, and finance, where European firms like Volkswagen and Siemens are deeply entrenched via joint ventures. 5. Souring diplomatic relations. Beyond economic measures, China could retaliate diplomatically hindering cooperation on climate change, cybersecurity, and technology. European green tech companies benefiting from Chinese market access or investments in wind, solar, or nuclear technologies could find doors shut abruptly. The ongoing tensions between Europe and China highlight a larger question. Can Europe really afford to alienate its key trading partner while also trying to secure sovereignty over its key industries? And if the answer is no, then what should Europe's next moves be? Here are some future scenarios depending on the EU's willingness to commit to either further engagement or decoupling from China. Scenario 1. Mild decoupling and strategic trade agreements. Europe could continue imposing the EV tariffs while negotiating trade agreements with China to ensure peace on other fronts. This middle path would avoid full economic decoupling. For instance, Europe could try to negotiate price caps for Chinese imports as an alternative to outright tariffs ensuring that affordable EVs stay on the market without undermining domestic manufacturers. Cooperation on key tech industries, such as batteries and renewable energy, could still be maintained but under stricter EU scrutiny to avoid unfair competition and state-subsidized dumping. Scenario 2. Full-scale retaliation and trade war. Europe sticks to its guns, refusing compromises, and China retaliates by escalating with countermeasures on various sectors, automotive exports, luxury goods, and supply chains. This could spiral into a full-scale trade war between two of the world's largest economic powers, which would wreak havoc globally. In this scenario, European automakers would bear the brunt of retaliatory action. Companies like Volkswagen, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz, reliant on the Chinese market for profits, would experience severe revenue shortfalls if China imposes tariffs or voluntarily reduces demand for European autos. Such a scenario would trigger factory shutdowns, layoffs, and production disruptions across the continent as firms scramble to find alternative markets. Given that China accounts for around a third of these automakers' sales, losing that market would put many of their operations at risk. Simultaneously, Europe would face soaring EV prices at home, hurting its green transition efforts and causing consumer backlash as decades of work on sustainability targets get delayed. If EV prices skyrocket due to tariffs, middle-class buyers, already grappling with high inflation and rising interest rates, may abandon or postpone their plans for more sustainable vehicles. This would also mean that Europe will miss its new 2035 goal of banning combustion engine vehicles. Aside from economic pain, we should also expect political backlash on both sides of the aisle. European governments would face internal pressure from unions, automotive workers, and manufacturers. China, too, would experience backlash. Its middle class may also resent rising costs associated with European luxury brands, and eventually, Beijing could see escalating diplomatic tensions hurt its own long-term growth prospects as markets in Europe sour. Inflationary pressures will likely rise as supply chains across both regions face disruptions. Goods that depend heavily on rare earth metals, batteries, solar panels, pharmaceuticals, and other Chinese inputs suddenly become more expensive in Europe. This won't be limited to Europe-China relations either. Given their deep trade connections, a full-blown trade war between the two powers would drag in other international actors. The U.S. While Washington may see opportunities as Europe and China fight, at the same time, the global recessionary pressures that would result could cause disruptions in American industries too. American firms intertwined with either the Chinese or European markets could face a supply chain choke. Emerging markets. Brazil. India, South Africa, and Southeast Asian nations may seize this chance to fill the void and boost their own manufacturing sectors. But the short-term shock of shifting supply chains would mean increased prices and economic instability. Global climate change efforts. Cooperation on climate change may take a hit, 
which in turn could erode the carefully built momentum of global sustainability efforts, further deepening the divide between the global north and south on climate politics. Scenario 3. Strategic Recalibration and Partial Cooperation In this more optimistic scenario, China and the EU realize the costs of escalating and choose diplomacy over further conflict. China knows that Europe is not only a significant market for its exports but also a crucial partner in its green and technological initiatives. Meanwhile, Europe realizes that cutting ties with China altogether is suicidal unless it can significantly modernize and diversify its supply chains. Thus, rather than hitting back hard, China may pursue a compromise, offering some concessions on subsidies to prevent EU tariffs from expanding. Here's how such a measured route could work out. One dot bilateral negotiations on EV production quotas or price caps. Instead of all-out tariffs, the EU could negotiate EV production quotas or price caps on Chinese-made vehicles destined for Europe. This would allow European automakers some breathing room to catch up on EV technology and battery production while satisfying both industry lobbyists and environmentalists that low-cost EVs can still be sold in Europe. This compromise would help keep EV prices accessible to European consumers. 2.EU aligns with global supply chains. Europe courts increased investments from the US, Japan, South Korea, and emerging markets to diversify its battery and semiconductor supply chains. Instead of trying to go it alone in building these industries from the ground up, the EU could look to form strategic partnerships with countries like India, which are aiming to ramp up their own automotive production. Europe could also deepen trade agreements with African nations, which hold vast resources of rare earth materials, but still face infrastructural challenges in fully exploiting them. 3. Mutual tariff reductions. It's also possible, though challenging, to negotiate bilateral agreements that would lead to mutual tariff reductions on other goods. This could be beneficial for both sides, allowing Europe to maintain access to crucial Chinese imports, such as batteries and rare materials, as well as keeping its own industries, such as luxury goods and agriculture exports, intact in China. For dot China recognizes European concerns over state subsidies. As part of these negotiations, China could scale back state subsidies for its largest EV manufacturers or offer some form of compromise, such as allowing more European companies to acquire stakes in key Chinese supply chains or relaxing foreign investment rules in designated sectors. 5.EU implements focused domestic reforms. Europe leverages the breathing space provided by such compromises to aggressively restructure its own EV manufacturing capacity and reduce dependency on China over the medium term. This means fostering in European research and development, R&D, environment that pushes boundaries in battery storage, charging infrastructure, and EV software. Major European economies could introduce reskilling programs for workers in the traditional auto sector to transition to EV production and related industries, creating a sustainable industrial policy for the new green economy. The question many analysts and policymakers seem unwilling to face head-on is, can Europe survive without China? Can Europe go it alone and carve independent supply chains, market access, and technological leadership without collaborating with one of the world's most powerful industrial players? In our globalized economy, isolationism doesn't work. Complete economic decoupling between Europe and China is, at best, highly unrealistic, and at worst, disastrous for both economies. China, while being a fierce competitor in certain sectors like EVs, remains vital to Europe's green transition tech advancements, supply chains, and broader consumer markets. Moreover, let's not forget that China is also adapting. As its domestic economy slows, China is becoming more dependent on exporting to developed markets, especially Europe and the US, to sustain its own growth model. Viewing this interdependency through the lens of a potential trade war or sustained conflict reveals how much both sides have to lose. The best approach for the EU would likely be selective decoupling from areas that pose the greatest risks of overdependence. This includes diversifying its batteries, semiconductors, and rare earth materials supply chains. However, a sudden and aggressive decoupling and all-or-nothing approach would hurt Europe more than it would hurt China, at least in the short to medium term. The tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles have kicked open the door to a much larger, more dangerous battleground in global economics. Europe's decision, though seeming like protective policy on the surface, may well trigger an escalation that few, if any, had fully considered. Beyond the automotive industry, this conflict could shake up global markets, potentially sparking retaliatory measures that go far deeper than just cars and consumer goods. 
Europe needs to balance protectionism with forward-thinking innovation because the EV tariffs are a temporary stopgap at best. Without a clear long-term strategy to dramatically improve its competitiveness in the green economy, Europe risks falling behind China, the United States, and other emerging markets. Instead of merely defending its industries with tariffs, the EU must adopt a sustainable, resilient industrial policy that incentivizes green technology scaling, innovation, and self-reliance. Long term, the question isn't whether tariffs will help or hurt, but whether Europe can future-proof itself in a world of shifting trade alliances, emerging industrial superpowers, and rapid technological change. Will the EU manage to pull through with strategic innovation and renewed competitiveness, or get buried under the weight of reactionary protectionism? In the coming years, we'll find out whether Europe has the political will to rise above this crisis. Not by retreating from global competition, but by facing it head-on, fueled by bold investments in green tech, skilled labor, and strategic partnerships. For now, all we can say is that the plot is thickening fast, and everyone, governments, businesses, and citizens alike, will be paying a heavier price if things spiral further.